In this video, I'm going to go through the optimal loadout for the attack plane in Battlefield 1, looking at some tips and tricks to improve your game along the way. I've been enjoying the attack plane quite a lot recently, and in my opinion, it's a really fun way of getting lots of kills and clearing objectives for your team. Although the aerial combat in Battlefield 1 leaves a lot to be desired, piloting an attack plane can actually be quite rewarding, and provide some great gameplay for both you and your gunner. Let's start out with the loadout choices. You can choose between the ground support, the tank hunter, and the airship buster. In my opinion, you should go for the ground support attack plane and then try out the other variants when you've got to grips with flying and want something different. They all have their specialities, but in this video, I'm gonna focus on getting kills in the most effective way possible and being able to take on everything that the game has to offer. That includes AA guns, enemies on the ground, planes in the air, and maybe even a behemoth. The ground support will get you so many kills on infantry players whilst also holding its own against enemy aircraft. The small caliber automatic cannon on the front is insanely good at splash damaging enemy players and the fragmentation bombs will finish the job on anything you didn't kill in the initial strafe. Working out how to dive, fire the cannons, drop the bombs and then pull up takes a bit of time, but I have some tricks for that further into this video. In addition to that, you may want to drop your flares at the same time. This is a lot to do in a small amount of time, but is a very effective approach to getting lots of kills and spotting enemies for the next pass. Now let's start out with a couple of tips and tricks. The gunner seat in the attack plane is essential. When you have a plane on your six, you'll find it very difficult to get away and loop behind them, especially if they're in a fighter. It's far more effective to switch seats and mow the chasing plane down, as you can see from the footage in the background. I almost tricked the plane into following me and then I level my plane out at full speed, switch into the back seat and kill. It's even easier if you have a gunner that's dedicated to sit in the back seat and look for enemy planes and take them down, but you know it's not always the case because it's quite boring sitting in there for most of the round. Maybe you'll only get 5 or 10 chances to take down a plane, or the guy in the front seat is doing all the killing and you're just picking up assists. That's why it's always important to know how to get into the back seat, level your plane out and shoot the dude who's trying to take you out in the face. Next up, let's take a look at controls. Here are some screenshots of my current key bindings. This is down to personal preference, and just because it works for me doesn't mean it will work for you. The biggest change is putting spacebar as pitch up, as it helps you with strafing and looping. Basically what I do when I do these strafes on groups of enemies, I point my plane towards the ground at a slight angle, shoot everything out of the main cannon, hover my thumb over spacebar, change to the bombs, bomb, change to the flares, flare, as holding spacebar, I kind of swoop down, drop everything, and swoop back up again. Then I can click my middle mouse button to look behind me and see how much damage I've done. It's also good to have the middle mouse button for looking behind because you can check if there's a plane following you. If you don't have a gunner and you don't have them telling you what's exactly behind you, it's very, very useful to use that to get a good spatial awareness of what's happening. Maps and modes. If you want lots of kills, you need to take a look at playing on operations, as that is attack plane heaven. Maps such as Monty Grappa will yield a high KPM, and offer some good opportunities to test yourself against other pilots. Conquest is also pretty nice, but you have far more targets and they're spread out, so getting taken down is more common. You also have to bear in mind that behemoths are going to be on both of these modes. If you have a good enemy team in the behemoth, which is quite unlikely because they wouldn't be good in order to have the behemoth, but you know what I mean, they're going to have AA guns, they're going to have people on the front trying to take you out, people on the top of the behemoth trying to take you out. It's really, really difficult. And my best advice for that is keep your distance and stay above the behemoth for most of the time or attack the behemoth in pairs with another plane. Less likely that you'll both get taken down in that situation and you can help each other out. Moving on from that, we'll take a look at height. I believe being at a higher altitude is a safer bet when in planes. This also goes for Battlefield 4, of course. You get more space to dogfight, less chance of getting hit by small arms fire or an AA and more room to line up a strafe on ground targets. Make sure you keep your height when playing in the attack plane especially, as it is not as fast as the fighter, and you won't be able to get away. It's also useful for the Sinai Sandstorm, you can fly above the Sandstorm, get teammates to spot enemies with 3D spotting, and then you can see them and take them down. It doesn't always work, but it is quite useful if it does. Now we're on to turning and looping. Again, you need to make sure you're holding spacebar to do this, basically you will pitch up constantly, you change your speed, with W and S or whatever the equivalent is on console and you can just loop round in circles. You want to try and cut the loop of the enemy plane but in my opinion you only really want to be doing that if you're in a fighter. In the attack plane you can switch it up really easily, break your own loop and sort of just fly straight off so he's chasing you, jump into the back seat and take him down. 
I find this works really, really well against better pilots. But to be honest, the best way is to have a gunner and take him down while you're looping. Again, looping is really not difficult. You just hold spacebar and manage your speed. Someone in the comments might be able to let me know what the most effective speed is, but for me, it's not really the same as BF3 or BF4. I just try and loop round and look at him and try and follow him and cut his loop. A couple of extra tips and tricks. At the start of a match, don't fly straight into the action as most players are looking to take out a plane early on. Instead, fly around the borders of the map, gaining some altitude and work out where the enemy targets are. This also gives you a chance to get a gunner into your plane and work out how you are going to approach the map depending on how the rest of your team fares. Spotting is important as well. You should spot normally when possible, but also make sure to use your spotting flares if available, and the same goes for your gunner. I'm often flying around spotting things in the plane and telling my squad mates what to attack as I get a really nice overview of the battlefield and they don't. This helps when prioritising targets such as tanks and AA guns as I don't have to fight them on my own. In my opinion, you have to concentrate on AA guns that are close to you, then planes, then tanks, then infantry. Sometimes I will just focus on infantry if they're on a flag as we need to cap it and you need to get infantry off it. But to be honest, you can see what I mean, it's just prioritising your targets and making sure you take out the most dangerous target first. Hopefully this video helps you if you're looking to get better in the attack plane. My biggest piece of advice after watching this video is just practice. It's not really like BF4 where it's that much more difficult to jump into a plane and learn everything. In BF1 it's a lot easier. Jump into an attack plane, get a friend to be your gunner, and just fly in a similar fashion as you see me doing in this video with the strafes picking on flags that have high amounts of enemies on them and you'll be fine. You can rack up some massive kill streaks and be really useful for your team at the same time. Thanks for watching this guide. If you did enjoy, please leave a like down below and I'll catch you in the next video.